if you love name exploit then please consider leaving a super thanks in the comments of this video it's a great way to make a one-time donation to the channel and help support name explain have you ever noticed just how many phrases and idioms we have in the English language that contain the names of various fruits and vegetables? For example, when we really care about someone, we might call them the apple of our eye. Or when we want to assure someone that we aren't too stressed, we could say to them that we are as cool as a cucumber. These phrases are said all the time in day-to-day -day speech, though despite how familiar many of us are with these phrases, we have probably never stopped to think how odd they really are. Like, what exactly is so cool about a cucumber and having a whole apple in your eye sounds pretty painful. In today's video we're going to be getting to the core of these fruity phrases and figuring out where they came from in the first place. First however, why are there so many phrases featuring fruit and veg to begin with? Well it's most likely due to the fact that fruit and vegetables are deeply ingrained into our history and society. Us humans have been either growing, harvesting or eating fruit and vegetables for probably as long as we've been homo sapiens and even before that too though how we cultivated them might be a tad different now and the produce themselves were a bit different in size shape and color fruit and veg has really always been there for us we have become so familiar with produce throughout our history that it makes sense that many fruit and vegetables would find themselves interwoven within our language in fact the way we use fruit and vegetables in these phrases relate quite often to the way we deal with these fruits and vegetables in real life. Take a term like cherry pick for example. We pick real cherries quite precisely when harvesting them, so it makes sense to use the idea of cherry picking when talking about being very selective about one thing or another. Sometimes however there seems to be very little relation between the fruit or veg and the way it is used in a phrase. Take the phrase of go bananas. This means to get overstimulated in one way or another, whether that be very excited or very angry. We are all familiar with this phrase, but what exactly have bananas got to do with being excited? Well, the idiom seems to have originated not with bananas, but instead with the creatures that enjoy bananas the most apes. Go ape is another term we use meaning a very similar thing. This phrase came into being because of the excitable nature of monkeys and other apes that we see often. As apes are seen as loving bananas so much, the phrase shifted seemingly in the 1960s from go ape to go bananas. This was also used because actual apes were seen as going ape over bananas. This all mixed together to give us the term of go bananas, meaning to be excited that we have to this day. This isn't the only case of bananas appearing in idioms however. We also have the term of top banana and second banana too. These are terms we use to refer to people. Calling someone a top banana means they're the most important person in that situation and likewise second banana means they're the second most important. These terms seem to have come about in the mid 20th century in US theatre. It was around this time that the leading comedian at a show would be referred to as the top banana, then the second lead would be second banana and so on. Actually, the earliest recording of this phrase isn't top banana but first banana. They also mentioned a third banana too. First and third bananas have seemingly fallen out of use though. I imagine banana was used as a term for comedians due to the long history that bananas and their slippery peels have in the world of slapstick comedy and clowning. Apples feature heavily in these phrases too. In fact, in Old English, apple was the word for any kind of fruit. It was only later down the line it got linked to the specific kind of apples we know today, hence why the word appears in other fruit names like pineapple. Anyway, we already mentioned the term of apple of my eye and how it means someone you deeply care for. But where did it come from? It's actually a super old term, dating back at least 1000 years, with the earliest recording of it being from the 9th century. It features in the Bible as well as in the works of Shakespeare. The phrase comes from an old belief that the pupil in your eye was a solid little round object and was highly valued. Due to this belief shape of the pupil, it reminded people of apples. People would initially say that something is the pupil of their eye due to the fact they could be seen in them and then it was switched to apple. Thankfully, no one is shoving actual apples in their eyes. Another phrase featuring apples features another fruit too, that being the phrase apples and oranges. We 
we use this to explain that two things can't really be compared to one another because they are so different. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Literal apples and oranges are two different things. Though the earliest recording we have of this phrase is actually apples to oysters from the 17th century, which is actually much more fitting as apples and oysters are much more different than apples and oranges. The phrase the apple doesn't fall far from the tree means that people, often parents and kids, tend to be similar. This one is quite obvious too. We can see trees as parents and kids as apples, and when the apples drop, they don't roll too far away. A phrase I'm familiar with is pear-shaped, as in something has gone all pear-shaped. I thought this was quite a well-known one, but from researching, it seems to primarily be a British term. It means that something has gone wrong in one way or another. Where it comes from, however, we don't seem to be too sure. I read ideas that comes from the Air Force and the shapes parachutes took on when they didn't deploy properly, to the idea it comes from the world of pottery, and when someone's pot would go wrong, it would quite literally be pear-shaped. One I wasn't all too familiar with, however, was the term of a plum job. This means that someone has a very good and desirable job. What have plums got to do with good jobs, however? One idea on this origin is that supposedly plum was a 17th century slang for £1,000 which was a lot of money then and still is now. This means that a job which would net you £1,000 was seen as, well, a plum job. Why plum meant £1,000, however, I have no idea. There's also the idea that the term comes from the fact that plums are soft, and a plum job is a nice, easy, soft job. Then we have the simple phrase of sour grapes. We use this to call out someone who's being overly negative about something. The phrase actually comes from one of the famous fables of Aesop, one called The Fox and the Grapes. It tells the story of a fox who desperately wants to eat some grapes on a vine, but is unable to reach them. Upon giving up, the fox tells the other animals that they didn't actually really want them because they were actually really sour. A lie the fox tells to cover up how upset they are over not being able to reach those grapes. One of the first phrases we mentioned in this video was cool as a cucumber. As mentioned, this means calm and not stressed. This is an interesting one and plays off the multiple meanings of the word cool. Cool initially meant something that is low in temperature, but of course also means someone or something that is calm and collective. You know the kind, sunglasses, leather jacket, all that stuff. Cucumbers are literally cool in a low temperature sense. This is because they are made primarily of water, so more often than not cool to the touch. This literal coolness of cucumbers took on a more metaphorical meaning in the phrase cool as a cucumber, relating to the trendy kind of cool as opposed to the cold kind of cool. Something we often do with cucumbers is pickle them. When we pickle cucumbers, they take on the name of a pickle, or a gherkin sometimes. Is, is that just a British thing? I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, through this we get the phrase of in a pickle, meaning to be in an awkward or difficult situation. We aren't entirely sure where this one comes from either. There's the Dutch phrase of in die pekele zitten, which means to sit in pickle brine, which also means to be in an awkward situation. But some feel the English phrase of in a pickle doesn't relate to this. Instead, they think it might come from the older term of being pickled, which meant to be drunk, which makes sense as being drunk often leads to awkward situations. Eventually, people could be in a pickle whether they were actually pickled or not. Calling someone pea brain means they are dumb. This isn't so much a phrase, but a word unto itself. It's in the OED and everything. This one is fairly self-explanatory. Peas are tiny and round, so it's supposed to allude to a dumb person having a brain the size of a pea. Slight tangent, but I really love the more recent coinage of the term of smooth brain, which means a similar thing. It's just really funny and fitting, I love it. We also have the phrase of two peas in a pod, which means two people or things that are really close to one another. This again is quite literal and relates to peas being nice and snug next to each other in their actual pods. Another Another literal one is the phrase of carrot and stick, and the similar phrase of dangle a carrot. This means to lead someone to something somewhat unwittingly. It comes from the idea of dangling a carrot in front of a horse or donkey to get it to move. Another one that is easy to understand is the term of hot potato. This means something that is difficult to handle, often in reference to tricky subject matters people don't want to deal with. It's often used in a phrase like drop the hot potato, meaning to let go of something difficult or tricky. It comes from the fact that a potato fresh out the oven can be really hot and difficult to hold onto. As well as hot potatoes, we also have couch potatoes. This is a term we use to describe someone who is lazy and sits on the couch all day. We've talked about the origins of this one before, but I 
honestly can't remember in which video. If someone remembers, let me know down below, please. It was coined in the 1970s by a man named Tom Lasino, who said it on the phone to one of his friends without much thought. It just came to him as a funny idea. His other friend, cartoonist Robert Armstrong, really liked it, however, and drew an image of a literal couch potato, along with a book on the subject matter. From there, it entered everyday usage. We also have the phrase of spill the beans. I've saved this one for the end, as beans are aren't really a fruit or vegetable, but legumes instead, though some sources claim they're vegetables, so who really knows. Spill the beans means to reveal something and comes from ancient Greece. People in ancient Greece would vote by putting beans in a jar, white beans meaning yes and black beans meaning no. When the votes were revealed, the beans would literally be spilled. These are only terms from the English language, but there are even more fruit and veg terms used in other languages too. This includes the French phrase of tombe dans les which translates into fall into apples, simply a phrase meaning someone has fainted. The German sich dein Tomaten auf den Olden vergessen, which translates into meaning to eat the tomatoes off your eyes and means to not see something. And the very strange Japanese phrase of aki nasu yom ni kawasuna, which means don't let the daughter-in-law eat full eggplants. This phrase is thought to relate to the long-held trope of mother and daughter-in-laws not getting along. There are most likely many more in many other languages, so let me know about them down below. I'm sure you see now, however, that no matter where in the world you are or what language you are speaking in, fruit and vegetables are never too far away. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.